Welcome to our continuing series on Purka Avot. We've already started the fifth chapter and we're about to do the second Mishnah, which we're going to dedicate as ever in memory of Levi ben Moshe Esther and Elisheva Yal Balev Levi, and also in memory of Shlomo ben Moshe Esther. Over to Michael. Thanks, Rav Moshiach. So, in this Mishnah, Mishnah 2, Perak 5, we uh, are going to um, basically the previous Mishnah dealt with how precious the world is and how much care Hashem took and what and regarding the rewards and punishment for those who maintain or destroy it. Uh, this Mishnah um, shows that um, a, a kind of uh, shows shows that this the wickedness how the wickedness was punished, and also a kind of timeline that I'd like to... Uh, a, a, a timeline before Hashem acted. Also, we notice that um, in this fifth parak, there is a pattern of tens, sevens, and fours. In the beginning, um, every Mishnah talks about ten units or ten things of one kind or another, and then it deals, uh, then various Mishnah to deal with units of seven, and finally units of four or categories. And this um, this arrangement came about by um, the 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 way that this this Mitzora was uh, organized because there was no written um, written uh, book. There weren't books. They were, they were learned by heart and they had to be memorized and it was easier probably to uh, memorize them in terms of ten than sevens and fours. It would be easier to learn and to teach. So, what does this Mishnah say? There were ten generations from Adam to Noah, which inform us how great uh, is his patience. Shekol hadorot hoyu mekaasim lefonov. For all those generations continued to anger him, at shehavi alehem almei hamabul, until he finally brought upon them the waters of the flood. So this Mishnah deals with the patience that Hashem had to hold himself back for ten generations before delivering his punishment. Um, so let's look at what Rambam has to say about this. He says, these generations are the words of the Torah, so-and-so begot so-and-so, according to its order. And it mentioned this and that which is after it because of its mentioning in the ten utterances, which has reproach in them for man, to arouse him and to refine his soul with the dispositional virtues and the intellectual virtues, which is the intention of this tractate. So, uh, there seemed to have been a process before Hashem decided to, uh, to act. He, uh, he was patient and he was lenient, um, and there was like a slow burn before uh, before action was taken, and action had to be taken. And we'll learn shortly what it was that provoked Hashem, the ultimate, the straw that broke, I shouldn't say the camel's back, mm. but I mean that kind of metaphorically. Mm. Um, so let's look and see, uh, these. let's talk about these generations which were angering and coming. This was an idiom that suggests that the provocation grew steadily worse. This is confirmed in the Tanakh and Midrash. Adam, as we know, sinned by eating forbidden fruit, for which he was expelled from the Gan Eden. In the next generation, Cain murdered his brother Abel. Then came the generation of Enosh, the son of Adam's third son, Seth. In his time, said the Midrash, idolatry rose. People began to call anything and everything a god to worship. Enosh's son, Canaan, instilled evil in his generation and misled it. Canaan's, Canaan's son, Mahalalel, was a penitent who mended his ways. Yet his son was called Yared, from a Hebrew word meaning to descend, to signify that Yared's generation descended to the lowest depths. Uh, this we learn from Agadat Bereshit, and there's some reference to it there. Then came Hanoch, 
of which uh, Tanakh writes that he walked with Hashem and suddenly he was not, for God had taken him. He too was an exception in his virtue, but in the Midrash it qualifies him even this. He was good only intermittently, and the, and, and the Almighty took him from this world during a period of piety, so that he should no longer relapse. Again, this is from Midrash Rabbah. Uh, uh, and then, let's look at the further generation. Hanoch's son was Methuselah. He was famed for his longevity, piousness as well. And the Midrash tells us yet again that he was an exception amid witchcraft, idolatry, and wickedness. This is from Midrash Agada in Boratius. And his son, Lemech, who was Noah's father, uh, we don't know very much. Tanakh on Noah's generation, however, it is clear, uh, says, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Then the writ adds, and the earth was corrupt before Hashem, and the earth was filled with violence, for all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. This we learn in Genesis 6, uh, 5, 11 to 12. Then, um, then uh, what exactly were their crimes? They descended to pillage and robbery, forbidden sexual union and murder, and they immersed the animal world in their sexual depravity. This is from Sefer Eliyahu Zutta. Um, so, in a world that was full of evil, there was nothing to stop the degeneration and corruption. Uh, with each generation, one worse than the other, suddenly the, fall, the, the earth was filled with uh, immorality and violence. Uh, normal order of the day was pillage and murder, until the tenth generation of the world, and it was brought down to its total destruction. Um, well, the question remains, why did Hashem remain so patient? The answer comes in a striking passage of the Midrash, and I quote, In three instances, HaKadosh Baruch Hu condoned idolatry, but would not condone quarrel or conflict. The first was in the time of the generation of Enosh. They began the worship of idols, but because there was peace amongst them, HaKadosh Baruch Hu bided his time and did not punish them. The generations of the flood, however, robbed and pillaged one another, developing internal contention and strife. This HaKadosh Baruch Hu could not overlook. This is from Mishnat Rabbi Eliezer, page 78. For nine generations, HaKadosh Baruch Hu was patient and long-suffering. Then man grew so depraved that he no longer respected his fellow man or considered peace and harmony important neither the person nor the property of his fellow was safe any longer from his unbridled rapaciousness this heaven would not tolerate almighty may hold back for a sin against him alone but for sins against man his retribution is swift and terrible even though Midrash says he waited for 120 years patiently while Methuselah lived to see if he and Noah could do anything. The Talmud affirms that Methuselah thundered every day and I quote, return in repentance for if not, know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will bring a flood upon you to float your carcasses on the water like leather sacks. This again is in Midrash HaGadol on Genesis 6.13. So Methuselah died, and the generation of Noah did not change. Then HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought, uh, brought the deluge to cleanse the world and start afresh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Michael. Okay, with that, we're going to finish. And next time we convene, we're going to do the ten generations from Noah to Avram Avinu. So until then, we wish you a wonderful and blessed week.